Hello and welcome to the Pod Sound School podcast, the podcast that aims to help you improve your podcast and gets into the lifestyle and struggles of podcasters. This is your host, Veronica, and here with me is my sidekick, Pain in the Ribs. Hey guys. Studio Steve. How's it going? I am the social media branding and content strategies for the Pod Sound School. And I'm the creative director and the producer. And we're here to help you with all the tools and tips and tricks you need to make something huge with your podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about Apple Podcasts mm -hmm. and the frustrations, some of the frustrations that we have with Apple Podcasts as podcast coaches and podcast producers, and also from our clients and students. We're going to be venting. Yeah, we're venting and we're, we're sticking it to the man. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because Apple is the man, right? Yeah. And if somebody from Apple is listening, mm -hmm. uh, please uh, get a hold of us. Yeah, get a hold of us, we'll you know. We'll be happy to give you feedback. We'll give you feedback. <laughs> we, I mean, we love Apple. Yes. But we have some frustrations. Yeah. Don't you guys agree that Apple Podcasts is just not very nice to indie podcasters? Yeah, they don't really care, right? It doesn't seem yeah, like they care. It looks like, it feels like they don't care about uh, small creators. About the small creators mm -hmm. or setting up anything on the directories that helps the small creators get their podcast noticed. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of what we're going to cover. Yeah, that's what we're going to cover. Okay, so first I thought it was cool. You were going to kind of share some stats that you found from this really cool article. Mm -hmm. The article is small biz with two Z's genius. Mm -hmm. Genius net. net. It is a really cool article. So they compile a series of, of stats from different surveys and different studies that they've done in the past two years. And this is what we found. This is so interesting. I just, I'm a sucker for, for this data. <laughs> <laughs> so it says that the most successful podcast episode had around 50,000 downloads in only 30 days. Uh, maybe it's Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah. or Serial or something or like that. Or Serial or something right? like that. Mm -hmm. An episode with 9,000 downloads earns a place in the top 5% of podcasts. Okay, and, wait. So uh, if we unpack that a little bit, mm -hmm. that means in 30 days, if you get 9,000 downloads mm -hmm. in a month, for one episode then your top five percent top five percent mm -hmm. so that's a pretty elite class of people up there with mm -hmm. nine thousand downloads right mm -hmm. okay yes and if you have 3400 downloads that will put you in the top 10 percent okay 3400 mm -hmm. the average podcast racks up 141 downloads in the first 30 days the first 30 days of releasing the episode of releasing the episode and we've seen this we've on, seen a, that on clients and students who clients and stu that's about getting that is that, about average that's above mm -hmm. average mm -hmm. i would say like 100 is average what about you listening and um how many downloads do you get let us know mm -hmm. you know uh, hit us up on social media at Pod Sound School. You can find us on YouTube where we do these podcasts live. In fact, we're doing this live right now on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And let us know about your frustrations with Apple and how many downloads. Share some of your stats with us because yeah. we're always hungry for those stats. Yeah. So even though 150 downloads, 200 downloads per episode doesn't sound very impressive, mm -hmm. uh, do you have a solid 150 people downloading your podcast. Yeah, you could easily a, say 100 strong 100 are downloading your podcast Downloading every week. your podcast is not a lot when it comes to opportunities to bring uh, sponsorships mm -hmm. or have ads on your podcast or making money or revenue from your podcast episodes. But just have in mind that, that it's a number of people. Like how often do you host something for uh, 100 people? Yeah, it's it's crazy. <laughs> you stuffed 100 people into a room. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really crazy. But the thing is, those 100 people typically aren't very um, engaging. Mm -hmm. um, just uh, like on YouTube, we have a place where we can comment and we can directly talk with our audience. But on the podcast directories, you it's just like, hey, leave a comment or uh, leave a review for my show on mm -hmm. Apple Podcasts, right? And so... It feels like we're producing our podcast at Crickets, even though there's 100 people. Yes. So that leads us, that to, leads us to our first frustration. Point number one. Point wait, wait, number wait, one. Wait, hold on. Let me go back with that. Frustration number one. No algorithm in place that works to help mm -hmm. indie podcasters. We're frustrated as heck. There's no algorithm. <laughs> there, algorithm is one of those words lately like organic, mm -hmm. right? It's just it's fancy and you, you say it like, oh. Are you making the algorithm happy? Mm -hmm. But I think what we mean by algorithm is just that it will help podcasters content to be suggested. To be suggested. And to be searchable. Mm -hmm. Searchable and yeah. optimized. And so there's 
more statistics on the same article is 144 million Americans listen to podcasts, and that's kind of pretty recent statistics. Mm -hmm. And if you put that another way, that's 51% of the U.S. population older than 12 years old Mm -hmm. who've listened to a podcast at least once. Mm -hmm. In comparison with 2018, it was 20 million. 20 million million more more. more Americans. Uh Mm -hmm. So there's really a disconnection happening. So there there are a lot of listeners, right? It's 144 million Americans, 51% of uh, the U.S. population listens to podcasts. So why the heck <laughs> why do we only have, I have 100? only 150 downloads uh, yeah and <laughs> what can i do to make my mm-hmm. podcast rank on apple podcasts um and then there are also podcasts there's a ton of people that are constantly looking um i was on twitter today we made a little video about it that we shared mm-hmm. where every day i get on twitter and i see hundreds of people asking for podcast suggestions mm-hmm. that shows you the disconnection right there yeah it's like people want to discover new podcasts but the podcast directories, and especially the big one, Apple, mm-hmm. is the one that isn't really doing anything to help the indie creator stand out more. Yeah, you can see that there's a disconnection between the number of podcast listeners growing mm-hmm. and the indie podcasters struggling so much to find their audiences and to grow their listenership. So where are all these people going? Well, all those people are finding podcasts on the major a new and no worthy list uh-huh. on the popularity popularity that's a hard word popularity, popularity. lists mm-hmm. on apple podcast or spotify and the podcast platforms don't have an algorithm that can suggest indie podcasts to people who would be interested in those kind of shows yeah so when we- it, it has nothing to do like with podcasting you don't need to invest a lot of money to have a well-produced podcast and if you're talented and then you're, uh, you know, you have all these talents and skills and your content is great, then why is it that I, my podcast cannot be suggested to people that would be interested in my podcast and my subjects? And why do you have to work so hard? Why do you have to get off the podcast players, Mm -hmm. find people on social media who are inside of a whole nother algorithm and then try to get them off of that social media platform and bring them to you? The podcast player. Yeah, that's why we feel so passionate about uh, getting mm-hmm. podcasters to start podcasting on YouTube because they are discovered within the platform. If they optimize their videos, if they optimize their content on YouTube, then mm-hmm. they can be found within the, within the platform. Yeah, They don't have to go anywhere else. And it seems like the technology is absolutely there. It's everywhere else. It's definitely the popular thing is this idea of understanding what people want to consume. Mm -hmm. And so, and we were joking about it before we were recording that it's our phone, it's our Apple. It knows everything about us. Mm -hmm. It should be able to tell us what podcast episode we want to listen to. Yeah, Um, And that's where if you compare like Apple podcasts to TikTok or YouTube or Mm -hmm. um, Netflix, Netflix or anything, right? They have this algorithm that after a while learns you, learns what you like and it starts suggesting podcasts to you. Mm -hmm. Also, it has a way that you can search out things or search out podcast episodes by any kind of imaginable question you could ask, mm-hmm. you know, like a gardening or how to improve my gardening or how to improve my golf swing or whatever it is, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So we're constantly finding people on Instagram and Twitter looking to, uh, for a new podcast to listen to. Uh-huh. And we also, within the same feed, we find podcasters promoting their podcast. There's a missing link. There's a, a connection that is that is missing, and that's to have a robust algorithm within the podcast directories within Apple that yeah. can make that connection. Yeah, and without making it like such an uphill battle. And I think that will be in place. And I think we're going to see all sorts of crazy things happening in the technology mm-hmm. of podcasting in the next few years. Who knows what's going to wind up happening with that? Mm-hmm. But in the meantime, we really ought to think about getting our content onto other platforms that do help or have a system in place to help independent creators and not just yes. huge networks. And Spotify is trying. Um, I get suggested podcasts all the time mm-hmm. on my on my account. But the problem with that is that uh, Spotify is only responsible for 40% of podcast uh, listens. In America. In America. In the United States. In the United States. So the, and that's always going to be like that probably. Mm-hmm. And I think that is Apple's attitude is, hey, we're Apple. You know, Mm -hmm. like we don't care. Um, And it's because in wealthier countries, you know, relatively wealthier countries where most people have iPhones instead of Android phones, the Apple podcast app comes installed Mm -hmm. on the phone. 
that's where people are going to go for their podcast. And so that's why they don't really have to care. Mm -hmm. I do think they will start caring though. Yeah. So Spotify's trying, they're starting their algorithm. They are actually opening up their API to developers. Um, and so there's going to be other developers helping with that problem over the next few years. Mm -hmm. But right now it doesn't exist. So we should be putting our efforts towards something that can actually bring more listeners and more viewers to our podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then finally on this topic, it, or on this complaint, <laughs> is that if the algorithm was in place, your old episodes don't just disappear. Like, oh, yeah. They could actually become real estate. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, how to improve my golf swing. Maybe you did an episode two years ago about that. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, for some reason, a whole surge of people are searching for that. And that episode takes off. Mm -hmm. And now um, this episode that you put a lot of work into two years ago is still a nice piece of real estate, still an asset that you created for, for you and for your brand that has a fighting chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why we strongly recommend uh, this to our clients, to our students, to people in our community to start podcasting on YouTube, mm -hmm. to incorporate a, a video into your workflow so you can post those videos on onto YouTube mm -hmm. and you can optimize those videos for search. And that way your audience will be able to find you because the YouTube algorithm is so robust mm -hmm. and it's been like improving and in a way that the growth that we have experienced is it's been, um, it's been crazy. It's yeah. Crazy and with, with other podcasters too uh -huh. that, you know, who have just worked so tirelessly to get their podcast mm -hmm. off the ground. And then they start podcasting on YouTube and the, the numbers that come in, the exposure that they get, it's crazy. And they realize after they got over their fears or whatever it was that made them mm -hmm. not want to be in front of a camera or be on YouTube for their podcast, that they, you know, they had a knack for it and that it's really not much different than podcasting yeah. was, right? I know. And if you're interested to start podcasting on YouTube, we put a guide to help you with this. Mm -hmm. It's called From Video. No. From Podcast to Video Starter Guide. From Podcast guide. to Video Starter Guide. And mm -hmm. in that guide, we talked about the equipment you're going to need, yep. the videos you can make, how to optimize your videos, and all of the things that you will need uh, to start podcasting on YouTube. So make sure that you download your guide. Yeah, and we'll leave it, the link for that right where you are listening to this episode. Mm -hmm. Or for you YouTube people, we'll leave it right here where we're watching this episode. And then we can continue with our second big point. Frustration, Frustration number, two. number two. No straightforward guidelines to get featured. It's all a mystery. It's all a mystery. Yeah, so there's no guidelines from Apple. Again, we're roasting you, Apple, and please talk to us. <laughs> so one of the podcasts please that we produced uh, made it to the new and noteworthy. Actually, two of them did. Oh, two of them. Yeah. Yeah. Our podcast. The podcast. And cool, yeah. the first podcast, the second podcast that we produced uh -huh. made it to the new and noteworthy. And that was huge. And, and, and we if, didn't know how. You don't know what the new and noteworthy is on on. Apple podcast, there's this featured section right at the top and it's this sought after section. How do I get my podcast up there? And some people do just randomly get chosen to be put up there. And that mm -hmm. has to do with the editorial department's decisions. But what it really has to do with is what Veronica's frustration is. And that's like, they don't tell you how it works. Yeah. They don't tell you what criteria they use. Mm -hmm. Uh, because we are podcast coaches. We have to dig really, really deep. Uh, in order for us to find a way for our clients and students to submit their podcast to be considered to be on one of the new and noteworthy lists mm -hmm. on Apple Podcasts. Yeah, and it was it's always a guessing game and you just mm -hmm. kind of like throw a hook out, you cast your line and you're just hoping that Apple bites. Yeah. They tell you we found this sort of um, clunky, clunky air table air table and if you contact podcast support sometimes and you say hey i'm really interested in being featured sometimes the the people at podcast support will send you an air table form that we were able to get an air table form that we share with our clients but i don't know if that air table form what its purposes are mm -hmm. how often the people at the editorial team at apple check it mm -hmm. and it just has all these different questions and it asks you when you would like your podcast to be mm -hmm. featured and this form that they have is somewhat new and mm -hmm. it didn't exist in the time that we had our first podcast featured. Yeah. It used to be that you just contact Apple support and say, can you please pass this on to your editorial team? Mm -hmm. And that's a good practice to do anyway. And most podcasters don't even realize you can do that. You can just contact Apple podcast support and say, Hey, I have a really great show and it's about this. And 
Um, and we do have some information about that later. If, if you're interested, definitely contact us. Mm -hmm. um, again, you know, you can always DM us. Veronica's hanging out on Instagram at Pod Sound School. And I'm on Twitter at Pod Sound School. Um, that's where we're very. Yeah. So the frustration is that they don't really. And I think they tell you right in the form or when you contact them, they're not going to let you know if you'll be featured or not. Mm -hmm. That you have to watch the, the podcast directory to see if your podcast is will be featured or not. Mm -hmm. So you don't get a response. You don't know if they're even looking at your submission or at your application. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, it's like you it, just submit your information and then you pray that the the Apple podcast gods or some <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. some kind soul will look at, at your podcast and at your the information that they ask for a lot of information mm -hmm. and we've done this for clients and then it's just like okay well yeah. uh, let's pray yeah and in case you're wondering like a great pod ski I once knew Robert mm -hmm. what an air table form is mm -hmm. an air table form is just basically empty fields it's like a survey yeah where it just it, asks you questions it's like an excel spreadsheet and what it does is it looks like a form to you the person mm -hmm. filling it out but uh the person who created the form gets it into an excel worksheet or a mm -hmm. spreadsheet um, super helpful and air table is really fun for making forms and things that you can send to people mm -hmm. to have them fill out um, but you could also use Google Forms for this. Mm -hmm. So Google Forms is very similar to Airtable. Um, so that is really the big frustration with yeah, number two. But my frustration is that they are not very clear. They should have a place where they can tell you exactly what, what you need or how many uh -huh. downloads you will need for that first episode or, or for your trailer. Uh -huh. It doesn't really advise you to have a trailer is just very confusing and, and yeah. not straightforward, not clear. You now, don't stand the chance really. to argue for Apple or to like kind of, you know, defend them on behalf mm -hmm. of Apple. Um, I will say they do have a, a website that they've put together that has about six to eight blog articles. It's super helpful to have to check out if you're a podcaster and tells you some of the best practices, but it is very vague and it's not detailed enough. And also, you know, it's not like you can contact YouTube would be another rebuttal. I'm just rebuttaling from Apple's side. Yeah. Well, it's not like you're you can, playing the devil's you, advocate. Yeah. It's not like you can contact YouTube and say, hey, will you consider my channel for a feature? Mm -hmm. Right. But you can advertise on YouTube mm -hmm. and you can pay money to have your channel mm -hmm. uh, viewed or to. And, and you can optimize your videos. You can to optimize your give videos. Your, your content a And chance. YouTube does put out press release information about how their algorithm works. Mm -hmm. It also provides a whole channel for their independent creators to teach them how to make their videos mm -hmm. rank more. I, yeah. It, and, you know, it does a lot of good stuff. Now, I do think I'm hoping that Apple's moving in these kind of directions, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the, it's not they can rebuttal, but they just get smashed right back down. Mm -hmm. Hey, Apple. You know, <laughs> come come back at us, Apple. I love it because it's just Apple. It's not a person. Where no, it's, it's this, this entity. It's the man. So that's that's frustration number two. And I think we can um, just move right into. Let's do it. Okay. Frustration number three. three, three, three. Oh, I know it's pretty bad. What is frustration number three? So this one is about sharing your podcast and creating a community within Apple Podcasts and the way that they don't provide, how do they don't provide a way for you as a podcaster to interact with your listeners. So you so would that's say one community, of my, my frustration. lack of community engagement. Lack of community engagement. Yeah. And one of the things that got me talking about it is because... If you have your podcast on Spotify, there's a way for you to share your episode, your newest episode from Spotify directly to Instagram stories. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who are using Instagram to promote your podcast, you have an account for your podcast and you're active on Instagram. This is a great way to share your podcast episode because uh, if you go to the share option on Spotify, then the podcast episode will be shared on Instagram stories directly. And there's a, a link that you can tap on and it will take you to, it takes you to the podcast episode. So people can listen to the podcast episode directly from Instagram with stories. With just one click. With just one click. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of unheard of for Instagram. If you don't have 10,000 
followers on Instagram, the swipe up doesn't work for Instagram stories. There's not a lot of places you can send people from your Instagram stories. You can send them to IGTV or to your posts in inside Instagram. But really, this is the only way that you can send people from your Instagram stories out of Instagram to Spotify to listen to that podcast episode. Mm -hmm. And Apple doesn't have this. It drives me nuts. You have to do all these workarounds for you to be able to send people to Apple Podcasts. Yeah, and it's it's pretty annoying. And that makes it extra hard to make people take that jump from wherever mm -hmm. it is they discover you. Say, okay, you've discovered me on this social platform where there's already all this noise. Mm -hmm. Come listen to my podcast. That's really difficult to do. Yeah. It's super difficult to do. And it's very frustrating. And it... it just makes it so that you really have to try so hard to compete on Apple podcast. Mm -hmm. You basically, you do need a team. Mm -hmm. You have to be coming from a place of having a team, having an established business, having some capital, um, coming from a place of being a celebrity, having mm -hmm. a huge network to begin with, maybe a big YouTube channel, maybe a big Instagram. So that's crazy because mm -hmm. we're not influencers. Most of us, that's not why we started podcasting. Maybe most of us don't even want to become influencers. Yeah. It would be nice and it will be nice to see and to watch and to enjoy all the evolutions of the podcasting players, including Apple. Including Apple, We yeah. were hard on you, Apple, but it comes from a place of love. <laughs> yeah. And you know so much about us, you know, and you ha we have you in our hands. <laughs> you know, we help you. I mean, this is like a huge monthly expense for a lot of us, you know. Okay, are you and done? Because I have more to say. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm done. So, and then... And then the other way that you, it would be nice to be able to interact with your listeners is through the comments that they leave on your podcast episodes mm -hmm. or the reviews that they leave on your episodes. So as of right now, you don't really have a way to reply to those comments to create some engagement with your listeners there on the platform. Yep. So this is like so annoying we compare it to YouTube and how every time somebody comments on our videos, how we get a notification and we go and like the the comment or if or if somebody is asking a question, then we have the opportunity to answer that yeah, question think, on the spot. Think how so powerful there's not, that is, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. it's a, yeah, it's a relationship, building a community, building um feature that YouTube has that Apple podcast or the other podcast directories don't. No, provide. you don't have a lot of options. You can leave a review, but the review is anonymous. Mm -hmm. And also, if it's nasty, it'll just stay there for everyone to see. Yes. And again, you'll have to contact Apple support to get some to get them to take the nasty comment mm -hmm. off, which I'm still meaning to do for a past podcast. I just haven't got around it. So there's <laughs> just this nasty, ugly comment that is not from a place of constructive criticism at all. Mm -hmm. Well, on YouTube and other platforms, you can take posts down that people post about mm -hmm. you and you can hide it from your channel. And you have that control. And it's because, you know, it's just this nice environment for indie creators to actually help YouTube make money, mm -hmm. you know, and po Apple Podcast is totally in that market. And I think we're going to see a lot of advancements. But in the meantime, we're strongly, strongly recommending and making this the year. It's our mission for this year for our Podskis is to get podcasters onto YouTube quickly and, yeah. and to immediately start finding ways that you can repurpose your podcast into videos mm -hmm. and how uh, it's just an explosion um, and something that we're finding with uh, right now, we're actually in, in the midst of creating a YouTube on podcasting course mm -hmm. and we're doing it with 18 founding members of the community who joined with us and are helping us. And we've been doing workshops with them. And they've been giving us sort of their input. And then we've been sharing some video lessons with them. And they're like, this whole new spark, creative mm -hmm. spark is hitting, which is that initial creative spark we had when we were first doing our podcast. So that's kind of reigniting. And then also to do keyword research, which is something you could do on YouTube. You can't really keyword research how to make yourself rank on Apple. That's mm -hmm. not in place. You can't title your episode something strategic and have that um, increase your chances of being able to rank on Apple. Mm -hmm. That would be cool if you could, but you can't. There's no tools that are going to help you see what people are searching on Apple. And there's also really no way to search anything on Apple. Mm -hmm. It's very limited. That sucks. And, and what it causes is all this crazy social media chaos and podcasters pulling their hair out, not making any money, not establishing their brand, not getting anywhere. 
Come on, <laughs> Apple. Sorry. <laughs> you know, it's just like we put a lot of effort and a lot of work into these things and we, we got do. into podcasting because I mean, you could tell I'm passionate about it. I'm going to I'm going to calm down. He is. He I'm is very passionate down. about it. But the point I'm getting to is that is what we're trying to do for yeah. this year. It's just very hard for us to see people in our community, podcasters in our community, our clients and our students. I mean, they're so talented, so smart, and their podcasts are so well produced mm -hmm. and not seeing them grow at a rate that is proportionate to the amount of effort that they're putting into producing their podcast yeah. and get the attention and the popularity that they deserve. Yeah. And the, inf the influence. The influence. I think you said that perfectly. You've never quite put it like that before. Growing at a rate that's proportionate per i don't even remember what i said i'm gonna have to go li <laughs> you're gonna have to listen to this episode <laughs> sometimes i have those moments <laughs> that's yeah that was a really nice moment because it is right like if you're just gonna get you know be very lazy and with your podcast and sort of hop on the anchor app and just kind of hey guys you know mm -hmm. <laughs> yep then and and then be and moan about your podcast not being discovered that's mm -hmm. one thing mm -hmm. but like veronica said we have so many people in our community that are like just busting their ass working so hard and putting out such good content and mm -hmm. learning how the social media platforms work and learning what works well on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. And I mean, and putting so many hours into their podcast and still stuck at that 150 download mark mm -hmm. for every episode. It's frustrating. It is frustrating. And it's totally disproportionate and it's totally to the amount of work they're putting in. Mm -hmm. And it's really, it's just kind of sad. It is. Um, and so that's why we've made it our goal to push people onto YouTube, to push people out of their comfort zone and to be more places at once. Mm -hmm. um, we're not telling you not to podcast on the directories. We're just saying, hang in there. They're going to catch up. Podcasting there are gonna is still new. There are going to be some new. changes. Yeah, we're, we were comparing Apple Podcasts and, and you know the other podcast platforms to what YouTube was back in the 2000s, in the beginning of the 2000s, uh -huh. when they were babies. And, uh, and something that I learned uh, this weekend was this last weekend was that YouTube started as a as a dating platform, yeah. believe it or not. Mm -hmm. So and then they evolved into this crazy, huge video monster. Monster. Yeah. <laughs> it's the place that you go for video. It's the place that you go for your information, for your tutorials, to learn new things, to they were constantly quick figuring... fixes. Like, how do I fix my sync? How uh -huh. do I do this? How do I do that? How do I start my podcast? Yeah. And... So we don't know where podcasting is heading. We want to have a presence in podcasting because I think there are big things coming huge things huge coming. things coming for the podcast industry mm -hmm. and you don't want to miss out and for indie podcasters too mm -hmm. it does come down to building your influence anywhere you can mm -hmm. and that like i said that's capital right that's your influence you can bring that to the podcast players and mm -hmm. you can stand out in your niche and in your field and have authority in whatever it is that you're doing mm -hmm. and that's really cool yeah and youtube is the easiest of all of the social platforms you could call youtube a social platform you couldn't call the podcast directories a social platform. No, it's not. You know, so uh, anyway, that's it. And with that, that's yes. That's kind of, I think, where we were leading. I feel better. You feel better? I feel better. Yeah. I, I ranted. I mm -hmm. raved. <laughs> I'm going to, I kind of still, I was hoping I would like cry, but <laughs> I didn't. And with that, uh, we love you guys. And we'll catch you on the next episode. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> and there you have it podski what did you think of this episode slide into our dms and let us know we make this show for you and we'll love to learn your feedback you can find us on instagram and twitter at pod sound school make sure you share a screenshot of this episode and tag us so we can give you some love on the instas yeah, and if you're interested in our feedback, we do pod audits most Thursdays live in our Facebook community, Podcasting for Bosses. These are 30-minute coaching sessions where we dissect your podcast, your social media, and your content. You'll find the sign-up sheet inside the group, podsoundschool.com slash community. And until next time, happy, happy casting, casting, amigos!